Shalom. Now then guys, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're all doing well. I've had a bit of a bad start to the week this week, as you'll probably see later on in the video, if I include any of the footage. Uh, I fitted a Worcester Heat Slave uh, combi yesterday, oil, and I just could not get the thing to run properly. Basically, the pump pressure was set on 60 PSI out of the box, which is rare. Put me analyse when I, I don't always check the pump pressure first because normally they're bang on with the Worcesters. Check the put the analyzer in and emissions were miles out. So check the pump pressure set on 60, turned it up to 145 where it should be, and the thing just went to lock out. So I couldn't I could not get it to run. I've just called back around this morning because last night I was getting a little bit, it was getting late anyway. It's a long day when you fit in a heat slave. Um, so I pulled back around this morning and tried to set it back up and it, it won't it won't go. So I've had to get more straight to it. Uh, so yeah, more problems. I've just been to fit a secondary cert pump. I didn't actually film it. Grunfast secondary bronze pump in a school. Took it out of the box. The box was perfect and the electric pack is all smashed. You know the, the bit where the terminals go? I couldn't even use the old one because they've changed the shape of it as well. So I've had to drive all the way. I had to drive 35 minutes back into town to get a new pump to drive all the way back so I don't understand why the installer always has to foot the bill for like for mistakes because obviously it's cost me probably an hour and 20 minutes plus my fuel you know just going I know it's probably not Grunfoss's fault it's probably been dropped off a shelf or whatever but it certainly ain't my fault so I don't understand why the um, installer always has to foot the bill for for like manufacturing defects or whatever defect it is I've got, a, I've got a row on with, I fitted a direct hot water cylinder, you guys might remember my last rant on the channel, and the stats were clicking off at like 52 degrees. Manufacturer aren't interested. I put, I put different elements in now, it's perfect. So manufacturer aren't interested. It's like, why should I have to foot the bill for that? It's not my cylinder, I only fit the thing. So I don't know, it's just, I, let me know if you guys get these sort of problems as well, but more and more manufacturers now just aren't interested. Uh, I fitted a, going on, the, I know I'm a bit of a rant now in it, but I fitted a salamander pump the other week. Uh, it was a salamander shower pump, twin impeller. Um, it was in customer sent a picture, of, can you get a replacement for this? Went out, new pump, first one didn't work out of the box, no power. Or you wiggled it and, it and it worked, but obviously I didn't go inside. Took it back to the merchants, got a new pump. Worked for about six weeks, same thing. So obviously the reed switch is not sensing the flow. So I just went and banged a Stuart and Turner in. Salamander sent me a pump out free of charge. I never asked for a pump. I just ran a little complaining. Sent me a pump out free of charge and said, oh, it can only be fitted in that property because it's registered. What use is a pump to me in a property that I'm never going to go back to because obviously I fit the student for turning a pump. It's useless. I don't want it. So, then, I mean, yeah, it just beggars belief sometimes the amount of problems that installers get and they have to deal with even though it's not our problem. You know, manufacturers should take way more responsibility for stuff. That's just my opinion anyway. I've just turned up to this job to see how they're getting on. Not been here for a while. Um, I don't know, some of you guys might remember this. So we put a new heating system in this house. Um, it's obviously, we put two zones in. They've insulated all the external walls. This is going in a cupboard everywhere. So put zones in. It's a heat slave going in here actually, an external one. But obviously it's not quite ready ready for us yeah still need to sort all the floors and stuff out so bitch crack on i thought i'd just call around and have a look since the day's going bad but yeah um so what we got coming up in this video i'll spin the camera i probably will show that heat slave job um just because i, I like to show the, the good and the bad um which everybody gets problems on jobs but yeah um we'll crack straight on with it anyway and uh yeah we'll see you all in the video I've turned up to this job, they've had another plumber out, the ball is overheating, apparently the cold feed's been unblocked, the flow pipe's getting really hot, um, none of the radiators are working bar, bar one, so I'm going to go and have a look at the three port, the lady's just unlocking the flow pipe, is that one on these, it's red hot, and the return is tepid, I'll check the filter, make sure we've not got a blockage there, I did actually quote to fit this boiler about three years ago, Gas pipe all on 15 mil, all the way around it. I mean, it might be all right, but I don't know. I'm not bitter. I'm just saying. So yeah, red hot flow pipe. I would say the boiler's just overheating. We've obviously got a blockage. 
we'll go and have a look. Right, it's a bit of a weird layout this house. It's like a dormer bungalow, but the header tank's up there. Follow the coal feed down, it's that one that's got some scale on it. Drops down and it's been teed into the vent. Obviously that coal feed has blocked. I don't, God knows where it runs. And then, but in theory that should, it's either been blocked or it's been pumping over, one of the two. The vent, they've lifted the vent really high, which is normally a sign that it's been pumping over. So what we'll do is we'll probably not, I'll have a look at the three ports seems okay, but I really want to, oh, I can't turn that. Um, I might be able to get up and bung the tank. I really want to have a look at, take the three port out because sometimes it can collapse inside. It is a Honeywell one. We'll have a look anyway. Someone has struggled there, look. They obviously thought the tank might have been in there. That's quite recent mess, if that makes sense. But these are just the domestic storage tanks in this. God knows how you ever get them out there, but I'm not really here to look at that. We're here to sort the heat in. I just thought I'd... You sort of get clues when people have been here before or struggled. So, yeah, we'll have a look. All the radiator valves are off as well. That pins probably had it but everyone's off in the house so clearly they've had some sort of issue taking the executive decision just to drain this one down so i can sort of figure out what's going on the pipe works a bit of a mess in the airing cupboard this bit's been cut off what i'll do is i'll clean this filter out while it's drained down as well it's one of them where you can only sort of flush it flush it through i mean that might be blocked but i don't think it will 100 percent cause issue i've got the uh, valve off to the header tank in the roof the ball valve's probably about knackered on that as well to be fair and we'll go and have a look at the three port in the airing cupboard but i've no idea how the pipes get across to the airing cupboard the cylinder cupboard's probably 10 meters on the other side of the house or the bungalow um right over there so somehow they must like go up into the roof and then across. It's like a dormer bungalow, so you can't actually see where them pipes go. These are, I don't know what they are. Hot and colds maybe. Not sure. So we'll just get that drained. And we'll whip the three pot out and see if there's any obvious blockage. The hot water is working to a fashion, but there's no return temperature. So I think it's just going around the coil. So clearly we've got some sort of restriction or blockage. But we'll have a look. Right, that filter's looking pretty minging which is not going to help the issue. I think that three port was sharing. I'll show you properly when I get it out. Because uh, when it was unlocked, it was, you know, going down both ports. But yeah, I don't know why they don't let you so you can take the middle out. I know there's no valves on these, but I'm going to try and find an outside tap or something to see if I can wash it out. That's it, no worries.
Didn't feel right. Glenn that filter out. I don't think that'd have been the actual issue because it, obviously it's not going to block the flow. The way these the way these work, it shouldn't block as such. But it needed cleaning out anyway because it was absolutely filthy. Um, so I've tightened that drain up, tap back up. Um, I might change the washer in it. Uh, but what I want to do is just fill it back up and see what happens. I haven't wired the three port in yet, but I can manually control it. So hopefully, as I say, I think that three port was sharing across the ports. But we'll have a look anyway. It might just be a big airlock in the system, but we'll have a look. I'm just filling back up. Hopefully this filter doesn't leak. No, in my look, it will. Everything I touch leaks. Uh, drain off tap is shut. I'll check the washer on it. At least the flue sealed. Um, so yeah, we'll fill back up. The three pots not wired up yet, and we'll wait and see what happens. The boiler itself doesn't look too bad. So I think it's about three years old, because I did quote this job. I did just spill a drop of water when I took the filter off, but it's, all, it's not gone on the PCB or anything. I'm not sure if it's nice and dry. Right, we're full to there. Filter's not leaking. Um, I leave the hose connected because one or two of the upstairs radiator valves look a bit dodgy. I've not actually checked the downstairs ones yet. Um, but what I'll do, power it back up. I know I haven't got the three port wide, it is in a safe position. And I did check the pump before I started, it seems like it's got tons of power. And we'll wait and see if anything gets hot. Right, I would say the reason somebody's cut this out is because there's an air tap in there. I think, I don't know if I'm too fat to get through. I didn't see it before, but these are the pipes from boiler, and they're not at the minute not getting any heat. I wish I'd seen that before, I probably would have changed it, but it's clearly been changed. You can say I'm not the first person to be here. What a stupid place! I've got my arm stuck. What a stupid place to put an air tap. There's another one. A manual one behind there that might be the one we need to get to if that is the primaries I can't quite tell there that looks like it's 15 mil there might be I mean, this room is absolutely full so there might be a radiator in here but god knows where right, we're starting to get some temperature on the flow 
and the return. A good way of clearing an airlock, it's still not perfect, is just keep turning your pump on and off. Sometimes it's better to put it on a plug top, or obviously, if you, if you look, it'll be on a, a lead where you can disconnect it. But boil is running, it's a bit, a bit complaining at the minute, but I think we are getting somewhere. As I say, I think that, I'll show you that three point in a second. It looked like it had been leaking out the head anyway, but you've got a line to go around the body. Boil is still complaining a bit. We've got a bit of return temperature, and the flow, flow still not massively hot. I still think we've got some air in it. But whether, whether there still is a blockage or an issue, I'm not too sure. We'll have, a, we'll have a play with it for a few more minutes and we'll see how well we get on. I'm just trying to pull it through from the cylinder on the coil flow. Water's looking pretty mucky, to be honest with you. Just, uh, the return's getting hot, but I think the flow's air lot. Not 100% sure at the minute. Get all the crap that's in it. I need to wash this sink out. I got that connected on there. Return's getting red hot. The, that's the flow, it's cold. Return red hot, which is weird. In a minute, I'm not 100% sure what's going on. There's no water in the flow, which is not going to be helping at all. That gate rail's not snapped off, there's just no water. Took the pump out, pump's not blocked. I think we might be getting somewhere. That gate snapped off. We'll have a look. Right, I found this air step underneath the floor, and I bet you any money in the world it is blocked <laughs> right there. But you see that bit there, that's where it'll be blocked 100%. What I'll probably do is just drain it from the boiler again, cut this air step out, and I bet it will work. Can't believe that. Never can't believe I didn't check that first, but hindsight's a wonderful thing in it. I put the pump back in, the pump's not blocked, and I would say the cupboard was that full of stuff, and you wouldn't have thought an air set would have been under the floor. But it is. So we'll get that cut out and we'll get that sorted. I'm in the world's most awkward place. You'll have to put up with the buzzing because it's on it's like a timer thing next to me. What I'm gonna do is cut that 22 there, cut that 22 there, cut that 15 there. And cut that 22 there, that's the vent, that's the cold feed. Somebody's teed it in above my head anyway. But that's where it'll be blocked, it'll be blocked right where my finger is. I just didn't see it for a start, because you wouldn't think to look in the bottom of this cupboard to be fair, for an air set. That pipe next to it looks pretty manky and old, doesn't it? God knows what that is. I wonder what that is. I don't know, I'll have a look at it. It's like it's been leaking, doesn't it? I bet the air, oh, actually, I bet the air set's been leaking, to be fair, and it's, it's leaked that much, it's blocked up, and then it stopped filling the system. What I try and do, I'm just draining, the, draining it from the boiler again. I hate air steps, I do. But yeah, we'll get it cut out and get it sorted. I'm hoping you guys can see that. I can't. Put it, I'll put it there, I think, for a start. Hopefully it's empty. In fact, no, I'll uh, cut it on the vent. So I can't see that, but... Always just drop it in. No, that's not too bad actually. Let me get blue there a second.
always get the most awkward awkward jobs to be fair she said the heating's not worked in a while like a long while she said quite a few people come out and have a look at it i just hope this is the issue i'm 99 percent sure it will be it's, the, it's just in the most awkward place let me just bring that up excuse fingers let this feed air is blocked 100 this will be blocked Look at the colour of the water. That feed there, well that one's dead anyway in theory. And then, look at that look, smart soup again. Rust. And then, just got to try and cut this. So it's really awkward to film. And then, cut. You'd be pleased to know I haven't got any new wheels yet for my car. But I do cut. I guarantee it's blocked here. I guarantee, yeah. They do every time. No wonder the poor boiler was overeating. Is it blocked there? See by the colour of the water, look. Oh, don't tell me the whole float pipe's blocked. It's not looking good, Mama. It's not looking good. Look, I can blow down that. It's not great. Generally, if they're going to block, they're blocking the air set. Right there, that's where that's where it's blocked. You guys probably can't see very well. Right there, that's that's the issue. In theory, I could unblock it. To be fair, I think it's been leaking though. Oh, what do I do? I used to be decisive. Now I'm not quite so sure. So much has been leaking down there, hasn't it? I'm just going to cut it out. I'll just cut it out. I know people will call me rough, but if you can see where I was working and how much time constraints I'm under, I'm just going to put compression socket, compression socket, T, pick the vent back up, and I'm going to leave the uh, cold feed TD into the vent at the top. It shouldn't cause an issue. Oh, we'll see if it works. Sweat on. Should be good. 
just have to go around and check all the radiators. I think a lot of them have been messed about with. But we'll get it going again. Go and shut that drain off, and we should be good to go. Right now, the boiler was sound better. I just flip. the heat exchanger should be fine anyway because it shouldn't have drained from there. It might not be calling. Oh, it is. Wait and see what happens. Now we've got some water in it. We it in. And we're getting flow temperature. Perfect. What we'll have to do is check all the rads, have a good tidy up, make sure the case seals are good on the boiler. Might still have a bit of an airlock, but at least the pipe's going up. Yeah, there goes the air gurgling. We'll have a look at it. I'm sure we're getting on the right track now. We're now getting good temperature everywhere. Pump's got a bit of air in it. A little, little purge. Three pumps working. Perfect. I've got and bleed them upstairs radiators. I'm sure good to go. Right, I've had to put a hose on there just to drag it through the return a bit. We're now getting solid return temperature. I've just got the hot water on. If you're struggling with air, just put your hot water on and because it, it, I tend to find it's easier, easier to pull it through. Flow's red hot now. Return is getting there. There's still too big a difference really. But the boiler's running away nicely. It's still firing just for hot water. I think it's them stupid air taps up in the roof. They're somewhere up there and I just can't quite get through to them. But if we can get it going, we should be good. It is starting, the return is starting to pick up. And you can hear less air in it, if that makes sense. I hate these stupid filters as well. Nowhere to bleed them. So yeah, hopefully they are doing a bit of good. I'm not sure if the radiators, I mean the three port's working. But I did fire the radiators up, the flow got really hot and the return was dead again. So I just need to get this main return working and then we'll have a look at the radiators. I might have to turn them all off, bar one, and get it going like that. It's just there's no TRVs on them, oh well there is, on a couple, but all the rest of them haven't got them. Flow's hot, return's coming. This return temperature is now solid, I would say there's probably about a 20 degree difference between the flow and the return. So what I'll do now is turn the hot water off and pop the heating on, and hopefully the radiator should start to warm up then. I've got the hot water going perfectly, but I'm struggling with the radiators a bit. I'm struggling for return temperature again. Let me just turn that off. She just told me she's lived here since 2002 and the hot water has never worked. She's only ever got lukewarm. And the, ra the radiators have only ever, ever been lukewarm as well. So obviously it's had a new boiler, but the, uh, the problems obviously didn't get resolved when the new boiler went in. So you're kind of fighting a losing battle from the start. But we are getting a bit of return temperature again now. It's just, I think half the issue is the, obviously the block feed and obviously the blocked air set, but I just hope nothing else blocked. The whole house looks like it's done mostly on 15 mil on the radiators. So it is going to be a tricky one to balance. In theory, the flow to the radiators is getting hot, but it just disappears up into the roof. So I'm just trying to drag it, drag it out of this return. Most of this end is done on 15 mil. So this is actually a new radiator, or newer than the rest. All the rest of them are ancient. So it's just pipes disappearing. I'm struggling to get this end warm at all. I'm just heard a big glug of air. I've turned all of them off bar one. I don't know if they're I mean, some of them have got TRVs on. This, these are all stone cold. Some of the other ones are warming up, but return temperature is still too low. So I've probably still got an airlock on the return or a blockage, but we are getting there. We're getting well, we're getting somewhere. So I'll probably turn that one back off again. 
and see if I can get it through the one in the toilet. So this is our flow. I know it's a bit biodirectional TRV, I would assume. Yeah, it is. So that is red hot, return freezing cold. So what I'll do is I'll make sure all the others are off. It is starting to warm up, but not, not really how it should be. I'll turn all the others off in the house best I can, because some of them you can't get to. And we'll just blast it through this one and see if we can get a return temperature. I wish I bought my thermal camera today. I don't leave it in the van because it's so expensive, but this is the only radiator in the house that's on, and we are getting return temperature, decent return temperature. So we'll just let this circulate all the way back to the boiler now, and clear that you can hear the air bouncing out of it. So we need to get a path on that return in the roof all the way back to the boiler. And once we get a good return temperature at the boiler, we can open the next one up, then the next one, and hopefully we can get all the radiators going. But at least we know the heating system works. But yeah, we'll just leave this one for like 10 minutes, let all the air bounce out of it, and then we will, as I say, work our way back to the boiler. All the ones in this side of the house are getting nice and hot. Struggling with the two in the lounge, so I'm just turning everyone back off. See, some of this is really old. Uh, turn everyone back off, and then we'll blast it through the two in the lounge, one at a time. Now then, um, that one, 50-50, it just, I couldn't get every radiator hot. It's a lot of 15 mil pipe in there, but it, it just the return temperature kept dropping. So I think there's probably a blockage somewhere. It just, the hot water was working perfectly. She said she'd always ever, only ever had tepid hot water ever since she'd been there, since 2002. But I think really what the system needs is a proper power flush and a proper look at because there's, there's two pipes that go across that roof space and they haven't got air taps on. So really, I mean, they do get hot, but you're constantly fighting a losing battle with it because, yeah, it really, really needs, the amount of rubbish that was in that system, it needs a proper flush out, really. Because there's, there's literally only so much you can do sometimes on like a service call or whatever. So what I've done is I've said to her, the radiators, I've got the radiators working where she is, if that makes sense, her bedroom and the living room and the kitchen. And she, they're working okay. They're not, again, they're not brilliant, but like one or two of the others in the laundry room and stuff, I've, I turned off basically to boost, to boost the ones that weren't, that, that they needed on really. Um, so yeah, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll quote for a power flush and see where we go from there. It's just a bit of a, Bit of a mess she said when they put the boiler in the uh the system was never cleaned out or anything like that it was just literally put the boiler on she really wants the boiler moving she wants it put in the corridor for some reason bless her I says it's not a very good place for the boiler because it will narrow it down too much but she wants to be able to see the green light coming on she says it keeps going out but it will do because it's got no circulation i tried to explain that to her but she says oh can you quote to put a boiler at the boiler and move the boiler into the corridor there's like there's really no way you can get the flu out but I don't know, sometimes you can only do your best. What I'll do is I'll get the system working for her and then if she still wants the boiler moving, we'll we'll quote. But as I say, I'd sooner just get the radiators working for her. So yeah, some some some, some jobs you can only do your best. We're just changing this heat slave today. Just got it, just got it draining from the slave tank. Uh, just connecting through my mates with me because these are heavy. So everything's isolated, power, electrics is all off. So it's just a case of getting the pipes cut off, getting this slid out. New filter, uh, getting the controls and getting it sorted. I just disconnect this old mountain filter. System has been cleaned. Oh, 
<laughs> right, that should be everything disconnected. Oil line at the bottom should be disconnected. Uh, bonding, electrics, all the pipes should just pull forward. So we just get the wheels underneath it. PRV's cut off. Uh, so yeah, they are heavy, but we'll get it shifted. And uh, get the new one sort of set in. Obviously get the fluid hole out. Um, re oil line drill back in with the new five valve. Sleeve in, and then the pipes will just jig back in. Similar to how they were before. Right, we just need to have a good tidy up now. Uh, managed to get it out without doing any damage. Because we've got carpet protector and dust sheets. Uh, so yeah, free space to work. Just need to get the new cord out, flue cord out. A bit out of breath because the oil's heavy then boilers. Get the get the cord out, and then we can start rejigging the pipes. That is the old boiler outside. Just got to get a new, the new one inside, but we've got these steps to contend with. Really so just drilled some holes for the oil line and the five valve. So these will come in, swing around this side of the boiler. Just prep that filter. Might be a little bit wonky, but I'll straighten up in a second. That will go behind, back down, and then into the return. I get the condens prepped off the boiler, and it's on this side. So that'll have to go behind and into that, um, into that drain. I'll give these walls a, a good wipe down as well. Then we can get the boiler pushed back in then. We can do the flue hole from outside in. So roughly there, I'll probably have to alter the position of this worktop to be lifted up a bit. But yeah, that's pretty much what we've done so far. Hole is out. Worst bit of the job really. I hate coring. They're just the cables I've just lifted up out of the way there that feed into the boiler. Not sure what that one is, it might be a prostat. Not 100% sure. Um, figure that bit out at the end. So, obviously, we've got return will come back down this side. Flow, uh, what's that? That's the that's the hot, that's the cold. So, they pretty much do jig nearly in the same place. Obviously, prep the condens, prepping the oil line, five valve, and stuff. We should be good to get this wheeled in then. Right, that's the boiler all sat in position. Um, he wants it, they're having new flooring in here, he said he'd just go up. So what we're gonna do is cut the old cut the old flooring off around the boiler. And then obviously we can just pipe it up. We've got the oil line through. I just need to connect it up onto that valve. Um, a little bit tricky, but not too bad. Uh, five hours in, it goes on the clip at the top, just here. And then obviously just jig the pipe work back in. Obviously flue holes out. Looks like it might be a touch forward on the flue hole. We'll see if we can get that. The boiler might go back a bit yet anyway. Don't look like we're quite far enough back, but we'll get that anyway. And then just pipe it up, wire it up, flush it out. Should be job done. Condenses across as well. I need to straighten that up. It's just twisting on the rubber bung a bit. But we'll have a look at that. Should be fine. Right, all I'm doing is basically connecting each pipe back in. Obviously, I'm going to try and get some clips on these as well. But you can only sort of do your best. It's where do you stop? We're going to put a... I'm going to do away with that fill loop there. We'll probably put a lever valve, teeth into the fill loop, cow mag or scale reducer, whatever you want to call it. Shock arrestor on here as well. I might even put the shock arrestor in here. Yeah, I'm not decided. But it's just about my return and obviously swing up underneath. I'll do that with a square bend so it all matches. Into that filter. Flow, flow will swing back across and hot i just unsweat that connect it onto there and then that's all all connected in then so i just had a moment of thought obviously i can put my fill loop in here my shock arrester or i can put my shock arrester down there but the cow mag wants to come in on the cold into the boiler that's obviously the way they've done it it's fine it will it'll work just as well down there there's a washing machine that goes in here um and then my condense will go across. That will swing on the bung. It's just twisted down. So yeah, that's getting there. Obviously, fill loop, fill loop will go into there. I'll just cut this out here, socket, tee that there. Looking down, it will, it will look, it will look fine. And then I can get some clips on there just to tidy that up. But it's not looking so bad. Obviously, you can only work with what you've got, and you can only ever do your best. So getting there. I generally always fit the manufacturer's controls unless the customer wants otherwise. So generally on these, it's just a case of sliding the panel out. Um, and then you know your boiler one slides in and they come prepared. So it makes installer's life a lot easier if I can get out of the box. Come on. 
So they literally just, you can see the connections on the back and then that will just slide in. A bit difficult to do one end, but you get the idea. Then that prepared to the ball and prepared to the stat as well, which it's got a programmable stat. So you can set your heating on and off times and stuff on there. So when you first strike these boilers up, these will always fire on hot water first. So it will build up the temperature, then it will flick across to the you know, let's just turn that down a bit. Uh, and then I'll check to make sure the stats all paired up properly. And we should be getting there then. Obviously, it could tidy up. Still got to do some much with the flue hole. And then uh, make good inside as well. And then, yeah, pretty much getting there. Obviously, I'll, I'll commission it all, set it all up and stuff. So I've got a problem with this oil pump. As soon as you set the pump pressure to where it should be, it was set at 60 out of the box, which is really rare, rare for a Worcester. As soon as you set the pump pressure to where it just should be, well, you can hear the oil pump rattling anyway. It's running okay, well, it's not running okay on 60 psi because obviously the PPM is miles out. But as soon as you set it, I just spoke to the rep, he did actually answer his phone to be fair. He says he's never had it before. Right. So I've got it running on 8 bar pump pressure, which is still too low. It runs now, but you can hear that oil pump rattling. Uh, so I can't really, I can't really commission it because it's never going to be right. So I've just spoke to the ref, he's supposed to be bringing me back in a minute, but I don't know, is it just me that gets all the dodgy ones?